Y'all ready to be history? Get started. Welcome. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. To the Pro Audio Suite. These guys are professional. They're motivated. Thanks to Tribooth, the best vocal booth for home or on the road voice recording. And Austrian Audio, making passion heard. Introducing Robert Marshall from Source Elements and Someone Audio Post, Chicago. Darren Robbo Robertson from Voodoo Radio Imaging, Sydney. Tech to the VO Stars, George the Tech Whitam from LA. And me, Andrew Peters, voiceover talent and home studio guy. Line up, Here we go. And welcome to another Pro Audio Suite. Thanks to Tribooth. Don't forget the code PAP200 to get 200 bucks off your purchase. And Austrian Audio, making passion heard. Now, this week we're talking about doing a session using Zoom. Should you turn the camera on or should you leave it off? Mm. Um, I know that uh, a session is about to happen with Robbo's <laughs> wife. Yeah. And she's freaking out about Zoom. So what's the scenario, Robbo? Well, she's got her first, I think we've spoken, I mentioned this on the show that Tanae picked up the Cartoon Network out of Hong Kong uh, doing their voiceovers, their female voice. And she's got her first session today. It should have been a couple of weeks ago, but we've had COVID in the house. So, um, so anyway, so she's got it today and she was freaking out because she doesn't want to be on camera particularly. You know, she's just... Well, not just, but recently had a baby, not feeling her best and women being women, she's not particularly feeling like she wants to be on camera. And and I was sort of saying to her this morning, look, I'll be honest with you. I really don't know the protocol. I don't do Zoom sessions. I think I've done one or two over 30 odd years. Um, I don't know whether you should have your camera on or off. So, so I was on the call to AP this morning and, and Tanae walked in and AP went, sort of went, well, I would never turn it on. And he's got some great reasons for that. So I think Tanae sort of wiped a, a bead of sweat off her brow and went, okay, I'm leaving it off. So, um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Well, the reason the I, I just, I've got a reason I don't do it. And that is because, well, there's a couple of reasons, but one, it, you know, it's going to use up a bit of CPU on your and, computer. And bandwidth. Yeah, and bandwidth. Yeah, and, bandwidth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing is, like, you're doing a voiceover, you're not doing a you know a news service on tv mm. and the other thing is like there's a good chance that most of the people like for me working with different engineers and producers and agencies or whatever they're probably like 20s and 30s so if i put a camera on me yeah i'm gonna be like they'll go oh god he's He's as old as my grandfather. <laughs> Santa Claus. <laughs> you know, and uh, like, and all of a sudden they judge you on what you look like and not right? what you sound like. Yeah, so. yeah that's, that's a good right. point. Really good point. <sighs> yeah, it's, I mean, I don't know the scenario. It's a scenario that they said, this will be on Zoom. Make sure you have your webcam ready. No, they didn't mention the webcam, but Tanae was sort of saying to them last night, look, you know, I've got Source Connects because we talked about her using my room here if she wanted, if they wanted to use Source Connect or I can use Source Connect now or blah, blah, blah. And they came back and said, well, we actually want to use Zoom. <laughs> so that made her instantly think that, you know, oh, shit, okay, do I have to have a camera on? Well, yeah. this is- and, and they're just using Zoom, so they're going to record. They're they're just expecting her to record a big long file. And yeah, then they're going to cut it up from there. Well, yeah, I mean that basically she will be doing it here on her own, pretty much for the duration of the time she has the contract. It's just because it's the first session, they just want to direct her and you know sort of point her in the right direction of what they want to hear, and then from then on in, she'll be doing it herself anyway. <sighs> it sounds like it's an interview. Yeah, it is basically like an interview audition session. Well, it's not an interview. She's signed the contract. Yeah, she's all signed up. Um, so it's signed, a meet and yeah. greet. It's a meet and greet. And, and it's the first session of, okay, this is how we want it to sound. You know, get that in her head. And then once she's mm. got that, it'll be set and forget. Okay, here's another script. Just chuck this one out, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's a, t- that's a toughie. I mean, I, I mean, if I was a talent in that situation and there was absolutely zero mention of being on camera, I would say I have no camera. In this studio. Yeah. I yeah. just don't use this. There's no camera here. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Moving on. Yeah. Um, th- there are situations where the camera is being used in, in voiceover recording sessions, and they are. One of my clients is E.G. Daly, and she said, I, they want me to have a certain background on my screen while I'm recording. And I was like, what's that about? And she's like, oh, when we do table reads, they all want us to have our character next to us. Uh So they do that with Zoom and they send her a a custom graphic. She puts it up on the Zoom background and everybody is next to their character when they do the table read, the virtual Zoom table read. And that is a scenario where the camera is part of the deal. 
but that's definitely a very niche thing. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. a very niche thing. But just so you can look at your own character, is that why? No, everybody else can see you in your character. Yeah. So when they're oh, looking at the Zoom reference. and they're interacting with each other on Zoom, and they now see who's talking and see the character next to them over their shoulder. And because, you know, the world runs on Zoom, people know how to use Zoom, there's familiarity with Zoom, there might be better ways to do this, there might be more, I don't know. Robbo, you can edit all that out, right? The, to forget this. the world runs on Zoom part. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we always say it's hard to out Zoom Zoom. It's also impossible to out Source Connect Source Connect, so let's be honest. But, That's yeah. impossible, yeah, yeah. we already know yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but because this is what's familiar to the client, and there's a generation now who have been shoved into using it for two years without whether they wanted to or not. It's just momentum and that's what's being used. So that's what they're familiar with. And somebody clever, probably in their 20s, said, let's just put their backdrop, put a backdrop up between, behind them. So in her case, we actually had to upgrade computers because she had a perfectly good MacBook Pro, right? A 2015. It couldn't do it. Yeah. It could not do the virtual background without a green screen. So she would have either had to buy a full green screen rig or just use a modern MacBook, which has that you know the extended graphics capability that can subtract out your background, you know. Mm, mm. And yeah, was, yeah. that was the fix. And she was planning to get one anyway, so it was no big deal. But yeah, even a 2015 MacBook Pro, which was quite capable and still is, cannot subtract out the background without wow. a green screen. You know, that level of compu computation, it just can't do it. So it's a damn good point you made earlier, Andrew. Like having Zoom it going with video is a load down. on the system. It's yeah. more yeah. things that can go wrong. It's more bandwidth. It's more, it's just, it's, I take for granted the fact that my new MacBook Air M1 can do all this stuff without breaking a sweat. Literally, like it just doesn't ever flinch and there's no fan. So you wouldn't know if it was. But that's just not what the most of the world's going to be running on. They're going to be running on systems that are going to go to its knees with heavy lifting from video and all that stuff, you know? And that's the truth. Do we know that M1s run Intel code faster than an Intel i9? I don't think we know or, that. I don't think that's possible. Yeah. I was I was just having this discussion with a friend of mine. He's like, you know, do I get an M1? And I was like, I actually don't think you do possibly because like go buy a used super high-end Intel machine, it's going to take all the software man manufacturers the next year or two to get all the software up to M1 native. And then once it's M1 native, you'll see the real benefit of it. And in the meantime, you're just buying something that's going to start losing value because by the time all the software manufacturers get everything up to complete M1 native code, there's going to be like the M1 250X29 chip that will be even better and and the question is specifically can the M1 out emulate an Intel chip? Because if it can't, why not wait till everyone is just M1 compatible? Yeah, I mean I, I like it for the fanless capability. Like to have a computer that I hold in my lap and edit video and there's no fan and I never burn my lap is really nice. I really enjoy that. Um but there's a huge amount of stuff that's still Intel. If I open my uh uh, this tangent brought to you by Robert Marshall. Um, if I bring up my, uh, my activity monitor on my Mac and sort by kind, now it shows which one are Intel, which one are Apple. I have to scroll off the bottom of the page to reach the Apple yeah. stuff. That's I how mean, many. Chrome. I'm not even is bothering Chrome counting. One? one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, on this Mac right now, right? And then the rest is Apple. There's probably 300 Apple things running. So, yeah, it's it's amazing it can do it, and it's amazing it can do it so well. But if it's a purpose-built machine for studio production and, and you have it in a quiet, you don't need, you have isolation from the machine, I would say Robert's on the money there, you know. I'm on Mini late 2020. I'm, I'm trying to see if it out Intel's the Intel. It, it's hard to find any specific data on there's this. There's a lot I'm, of boot, I'm now there's a lot of like benchmarking videos and stuff. The thing is, the it's the single core that makes a difference, and the single core performance is really, really, really good. And that's what ninety five percent of what you're doing is, right? It's just a single core. You'll never ever see the the benefit of having seven, eight, twelve, forty eight cores, whatever it is, sixty four cores. You'll never notice it unless you're running apps that use all the cores. 
and most of the people are on Chrome and Zoom. So <laughs> they're not using any Chrome cores. It's, yeah, right. it's crazy. It's crazy stuff. At the, end, the horsepower is so outrageous, and nobody will know or even care because they'll never really use it. That's what the iPad Pros are like, too. The chip that you get on a MacBook M1 is what was in an iPad Pro three years ago. And it's really almost exactly the same chip. And it was a it was a ridiculous computer because it was super powerful and you couldn't do crap with it. <laughs> there was so little that took advantage of the power. It was pointless. So when they finally came out with the desktop and the laptop, oh, okay, now we can actually use the power of this chip. That's how far ahead of the curve they are. So yeah, it's going to be a while until everybody catches up, but they will. So cameras yes. off? Cameras off. Pants down, cameras, cameras off. off. Save your bandwidth. Yeah, hey, right. I start every Zoom session with my clients, cameras off. That's yep. how I start every session. Isn't it funny? I've done a couple. I've only done a couple of Zoom sessions over the years. One with um, who's someone who's now a good mate of mine, uh, Catherine. Um, but yeah, I always had the cameras on, and and now I know. I so maybe I wasn't following protocol. Maybe I should add it off. So there you go. Yeah, just don't have it off with Catherine. No. <laughs> so so it, it seems here that at least by some stuff, the um, like like in one test, the M1, the the Intel did a blender task in three minutes flat. The M1 on Rosetta did it in 3.2, three, three minutes, 21 seconds. So only like 10%. A little bit, a little slower. bit slower. And I, I don't know. Well, emulating. Right. That's crazy. Core i9 versus M1, which is better. Yeah. Content creation. That's this, this, that's this thing called Rosetta. So every, every app that you run on a Mac, that's not compiled for the Silicon chip uses this built in tool that recompiles the app when you launch it. And then at that point, from that point on, that app is Intel. That's how it actually works. It's not like translating it real time all the time. It actually, my understanding is that it it recompiles it to run on silicon. If any, if I'm wrong, leave a comment down yeah, below. Yeah, I, I don't know either way. It it does seem to at least there's some implications here that the silicon emulating an Intel chip is not quite as fast but maybe that's not for every task that it has. I don't know. It's just a thought because, you know, you're you're also spending a premium for that M1 chip, and right now it's like you don't get to, I mean, fanless and that stuff, that's true, but you don't get to get its full breath because you're still just trying to be an Intel chip for 80% of what it's doing. Well, 20% of what it's doing, based on my list of apps. Yeah. So, so that many it are M1 depends. native now? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Mm, cool. Yeah. There's a lot more, a lot more now. Too technical for me. Uh, 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 just a, a quick one, just to uh, <laughs> confirm, leave the camera off. Be careful how you Google this, by the way. Um, you will find there was a BBC cross to uh, for an interview with another female, and in the background on her shelf was a sex toy. <laughs> uh, nice. It's gone viral. Love Not it. the sex toy, but the video. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sex toy was viral. Yeah. I bet it has. Well, that was fun. Is it over? The Pro Audio Suite. With thanks to Trimove. And Austrian Audio. Recorded using Source Connect. Edited by Andrew Peters. And mixed by Voodoo Radio Imaging. With tech support from George the Tech Witter. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and join in the conversation on our Facebook group. To leave a comment, suggest a topic, or just say g'day, drop us a note at our website. Theproaudiosuite.com.